vendors like Samsung and LG. So they don't manage to really stop the thing. Um, and, and the only way for them to try and conquer those devices is to somehow convince people who are using Windows as a desktop operating system, like Vista or Vista 7, mm. as I personally call it, is to, to, to try and teach them, oh, look, this phone thing is not too bad. And then they will kind of surprise them and say, oh, here comes this tablet and it runs Windows 8. Um, with some interface or something, and but I don't think that's going to work. I mean, it's uh, Google has been talking for years about trying to merge Chrome OS with Android, uh, saying that Chrome OS is for uh, a mouseable device, uh, mouseable interface, and um, and basically Android is supposed to be for touch, for touch screens, slide, whatever. Uh, but it's never happened because it's it's just it's too complicated. It's hard for them to enter the with Chromebooks and stuff. It's hard for them to enter the market and then to make things compatible across those two platforms with very different types of hardware. It's not it's not that it, that simple. But um, I I think that the, what's likely to happen, as you see now, is uh, the iPhone share is shrinking. Uh, sorry, the the actually it does shrink as well, but the uh, the iPad share is shrinking because Android's growing, and in phones, it's the you know Android is selling, outselling you know the iPhone by factor of at least one to two. Now it's just something like seventy five percent of the sales is Android, and Apple is like fifteen percent according to IDC. So you know Android is apparently dom- starting to dominate all of the sector that's you know portable mobile devices. And Microsoft stays with the desktop. So the way I see it, maybe there won't be any year of the desktop, so to speak, but there will be Android as a uh, a very big contender and an increase in amounts of you know devices people are using on a client side, not just the server side. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's certainly going to be very interesting this time next year to see how we talk about the... Uh, successes or failures of, um, of Microsoft's latest release uh, batch of, of products. Um, I, I think I was talking about this earlier today and um, I was I was accused by uh, somebody of being uh, very harsh towards Microsoft. And I think the problem I've got, I've got, I don't know, I can't speak to you, but this is my take on Microsoft as a company. They release their products, and I've got no issue if somebody says, no, I don't want to use Android, or I don't want to use Linux, I want to use Microsoft, uh, I want to use Windows, whatever. I think the problem I always had with uh, with Microsoft wasn't so much what they released, which I chose not to use, because I found Linux was more productive for me, was more reliable for me, um, was the way that they went about it, um, the bully boy tactics that they seemed to do. The, and imposing the, these. Yeah. The court cases that we've seen where Microsoft has been proved to be at fault, um, the Microsoft blaming, the advocate behaviour that would come on and be aggressive, and the, the shady, underhanded sort of advocacy that we see on the forums that both me and you have experienced firsthand. Mm. All this adds up. Like me as well. You see this both on the forums and you see Microsoft's doing it. For example, in Dell, threatening to uh, do something if the company doesn't pre-install Windows on all the computers. So that's retaliation tactics, and you see this among the advocates, all these personal attacks and threats, and, you know, I know who you are, I know where you live, and I will, you know, contact the employer. That's that's always been going on, because they're just shameless about it. I mean, Microsoft they, has not been boasting about ethics ever, so. I mean, they, yes, I say that. The, the advocates I come across, I must say that there are some very, very decent people. Um, out of those, uh, and even in the world of the MVPs, Microsoft MVPs, I've met a couple of people who are actually genuinely decent people. Um, and one that springs to mind is a chap called Richard Kay, who uh, is a very nice chap, and he's quite he's he's quite blunt with his opinions on uh, on Microsoft products. If he doesn't like something or he thinks something's better, so I can't I can't knock all of them. I wouldn't want to start everyone with the same brush, but you have a, an undercurrent of uh, advocates, and we see a lot of them, or I come across a lot of them, which will use lots of tactics which I find questionable, objectionable, um, and sometimes rude, um, and to other people, grossly offensive they can be. Um, and this is a problem I have, that, that type, that's not fair, that type of tactic isn't fair. If somebody wants to sell their product and it's, it becomes popular on the back of it being a fantastic product that everybody loves, 
then that's fine. I've got no issue. It's when you see these dirty tricks and you see the, uh, the messages. I mean, recently they thought um, they'd named me on uh, on Cola, and I've still left them guessing as to whether they got my real name or not. Um, but again, it was a blatant attempt to try and silence me. Why do I say that? Because there was also a message just uh, prior to that asking me how my wife was and naming her by her first name and also uh, my location of where they think I live. Now, if that's not trying to silence somebody and trying to make them a bit scared, it obviously didn't make me scared, but I don't know what isn't. And it was a rather, it was a rather sinister post in the respect. Um, and it went along the lines of, Hello, how, um, how is Michelle? Um, and Michelle's my wife, for those who don't know. Um, and what's the weather like in Luton? Or something like something along those lines. It was one of those innocently written, um, innocent questions with a sinister undertone, um, which was thrown in completely out of the blue, completely off topic to anything we're talking about. Um, Some people are eating YouTubers. It's an attempt to censor people, self censor people, and it's called dog dropping. When basically what they do is, or thing they do is kind of like take the your personal details and just dropping them for everyone on the forum to use. So any person, not necessarily themselves, who wishes to cause harm or to smear or maybe to come at your door or something, will see the docs and then come and cause you harm. This way it's I'm, called dog dropping. So it's it's just an intimidation tactic, basically. I mean, un- unfortunately, they hadn't done their research properly as, uh, and maybe questioned their own... Uh, their own sources for getting my surname and maybe considered that because I didn't tell anybody my surname and I, I quite value my privacy and I don't see my surname being relevant to anything I'm writing. If people don't want to read what I write or don't buy into what I write, fine, that's no problem. My surname isn't going to change anything at all. But uh, it was a little bit shocking to see the level because I know where I seeded that particular name and uh, it was, um, yeah, it wouldn't be something that you could stumble upon by accident. You have to specifically look for it, which was a little bit unnerving that somebody actually does spend their time uh, doing that, uh, doing this type of thing. No, piece. trust me, they do that. I've seen them do it. I mean, stuff. Unfortunately, yeah, you didn't, and they get they, it wrong most of the time. But, but even if they give the impression to other people, well, well, apparently the other the other accusation about me, and whilst Roy uh, Roy won't. Uh, divulge any of my personal details here. Um, he hopefully can laugh at this. Apparently I'm also a salesman, but I can't remember what the company was for. I mean, it was another one of the Microsoft advocates was claiming that they used to know me because I worked for some company as a salesman. Um, and I can't for life remember what the company name was now, but uh, I've never sold anything in my life. I've never been a salesman yeah. or a salesperson. Um, but they, they wrote it as if it was true. And then when I said, uh, no, that's not right, it was, oh, we protest too much. Well, if I'd said nothing at all, then I would have been guilty as well. Because, But yeah, so that, that was what the claim I'm doing at the moment, I think. Uh, so they get they get people wrong. I've seen it before, and I received emails about it when people were saying that some people accused them of being like somebody who they, you know, they never heard about. But I think the intention there is to warn the others uh, even if they get the details wrong, it, it's basically sending out the message, you think you're anonymous in this forum, be careful, because this person here, we claim to have found out the whatever, you know, whatever way to find the details about a person, and we are going to cause him trouble. It's it's really just the bully, uh, bullying tactics, or the, you know, the, the lunatic dictator tactics of like, you know, look what we did to this person, you know, you could be next. Well, as you know, over in the UK, uh, Roy, we've got um, a lot of uh, news articles, a lot of press coverage on this cyber stalking and hacking and um, invasion of people's privacy. And it's all sort of linked. And we hear the horror stories about Facebook and uh, people that, uh, unfortunately, haven't been able to take the uh, the insults and that it does something rather drastic and very sad. And uh, it's, it's a bit of a hot potato, this whole subject of, um, of computer this privacy invasion. And I'm, I'm currently writing an article covering just that. Uh, I think what spurred me to do it was the the personal remarks to me about my wife. I'm not particularly bothered about what they want to say about herself or what they want to claim or think they claim. But uh, it's a lot of people would be very, very frightened by that, I think. And maybe that was I, well, Since you mentioned that also days ago, they also mentioned my wife as well. So yeah. there is an attempt to drag people who otherwise wouldn't be involved in the conversation or anything to do with uh, with free software to if try and break them into it. If people listen to this, haven't listened to myself or Roy before, and um, are finding either quite far fetched, I'll just briefly say this: um, before I started writing uh, on Open Bytes and doing any of this, 
any of the articles on Linux or free software. I was told by somebody that if I did, I would uh, be the subject of abuse and uh, targeted by people who would be uh, rather clever, rather insulting, and uh, trying to promote a